Tony Autumn awesome Fishing Time folks, this time it's some tips for beginners going boat fishing. Now during the winter over here in the UK we get a species called whiting and if you're out in a boat it doesn't matter whether you're on your own small boat with a friend or if you're out in a charter boat with a group. If you're fishing in anywhere that's say along the south coast of England there's a reasonable flow of tide. Your bait Absolutely, as a beginner, this is paramount importance, has to be nailed on the bottom. You have to be in contact with the seabed. During the winter, the majority of the fish are going to be on the bottom, poking and digging around and looking for food. So here's the basic rig that I use for catching whiting. Now, there's a lot of people out there that love to bling it up big time. Whiting are a very basic, small predator fish. Good eating too. We have size limits over here in the UK. Always check your size limits. Indeed, in other countries, I might have size limits as well. Now, when the tide is flowing hard, I like to have a fairly long trace, but I put two hooks on it. Not two hooks together, two hooks spaced apart. My rig is called a running ledger rig, okay? Some of you would have seen it before. You can unclip your lead and you can change leads. Now, that's important for when the tide picks up and you have to go to a heavier lead, or it eases off and you want to go for a light lead. That lead there is about four ounces. That would be my choice when the tide starts to fade off or from slack water and it's just starting to pick up. You want enough lead to hold bottom. If you can't fill the bottom, the seabed, then clip another lead on, go up a size. Now I've got a long flowing trace there and the two hooks you 2 3 4 that sort of size. Here, these are just an offset one. Are on about 20 to 30, probably 30 pound mono that one is. But I've got one hook here and one hook, I'll put it in front of my face, maybe three feet away there. And there's my lead. So when I drop down to the seabed, the lead hits, let it go down slowly, and the current, the tide, will wash this down tide so any fish coming up this way We'll pick those baits up. That's the theory. Now then, with a small boom like this, remember that do not drop it down fast because here's the main line from your rod top here. This, as the lead goes down through the water, it will spin up around there. Let it go down, stop, 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 start, stop, start like that slowly, just thumbing your spool or slowing up your fixed spool reel as you go, or alternately use a longer boom. So the boom could be from there to there. So as you drop down, this comes up like that and stops it tangling. Now that's for flowing tide, but I change rigs. When it starts to go very slack, I feel the fish, they feel at ease more, they come off the seabed, they're hunting more vertically. So then I go to a straight, what we call a paternoster. So you've got your lead on the bottom, the same principle, you can use this. So when it's dead slack tide, you might get away with two ounces. The tide is straight up down. That can be slack high or slack low. So with a clip like this, you can change leads. And then after a while, you might want to go to say half a pound, eight ounces, something like that. But for a good deal, at least an hour, hour and a half, you should be able to get away with using a pattern off the vertically. And about 12 inches off the seabed, I've got a short, we call this a snood, I don't know what they call it in other countries, and a hook there, same size, just whiting hooks, about, it's about 12 inches off the seabed, but then I've got a bonus one, another 12 inches above that. And you can see, look, they spin around, they don't really tangle too much. And that's for vertical fishing when the fish are higher up in the water. Obviously, as the tide starts to barrel along, get rid of this rig, change back to the running ledger rig. Hmm, what are you going to use for bait? Squid, mackerel, you can even use crabs, you can use worms, whiting each, but eat pretty much anything. I'm going to say, let's turn that round. Why did I, why did I drop that? Who, who's made, was that you at the backsmith? Trouble that boy. A piece of white paper. No, I'm not saying fish with a piece of white paper. I would say it's about the average size for whiting. Almost the length of your largest finger. Now I also leave a little tag in sticking up there because I go through, let's say my piece of squid, I'm gonna go through like this, at the top end, as near the top as I can, I go up, I pop that all over the eye and that tag end. Then it can come down here. I can turn the hook around, put a little bend in the squid, the worm, the mackerel, just like that. And then you can see it'll hang straight. 
and that's what I use a good deal of the time are baits about the size of your largest finger almost as fat as that as well so just once through the top there pull it around can be a worm if you want I, this is the way I do it guys I pop it over that little tag in which holds it put a bend in it there pop it over and there you can see that's my two baits there's my leg my two baits let's get out of board high sea drifter and see if in fact I do actually catch any whiting. I tell you what, something else blunders along as well. Okay, so here you can see that running ledger rig that I was talking about. You've got the plastic boom there, you've got the lead clip, I've got a bead on this one. It slides up and down, so when it's lying on the seabed, the fish can move away, pull through the lead, and there is the size of bait. Pretty much like I said, I showed you with the pieces of paper, these are strips of squid cut about the same size. I cast slightly down current and I let on this particular reel, I've got a fixed ball reel, I let the line pay out, but I stop it every now and then, as you can see, just on the edge of the spool using my finger. That stops the line twisting up around the main trace. Close the bay line, check your drag. Now you can with whiting, if they're feeding and they're, and they're, they're in a shoal, or what, they, they can be a shoal fish, you can get more bites and get more success by holding the line across your fingers like that. And then when you feel a bite, you can strike. Of course, you can leave it in the rod holder, no reason why you can't, or you can rest it down. But just make sure when you do, you leave your drag on the brake that is backed off in case a big fish grabs hold. And here we go, yes indeedy, it is a whiting. And these fish were really nice, big, chunky ones. Now this is on the Paternoster rig I showed you. And you can see he's absolutely scoffed it. And these were, on this particular day, pretty large whiting. I mean, they can get what they call pin whiting, tiny little ones. These are well over the limit, big fish. Some of them two, two and a half, three pounds. That's a very good eating fish there. And look at the teeth on them. And that's why I call them a small predator. They eat other fish, crustaceans, crabs, everything that's on the bottom, that's what they eat. Best thing you do is put them in the cooler, keep them in the cool box, maybe take one of those blue frozen packs with you, and that way, the few fish you do want to keep for food, you've got them fresh. So I'm fishing on my own this day, and I'm using rods that are called down tide rods, and I've got a couple of these like this one, up tide, that I'm casting across the current, now there is the running ledger reader. Note the, that this, this fish here, which is a giant pouting, has taken the down tide end of that hook. It's come up, as I described, from the current, down tide. The first bait it blunders across is indeed the bottom hook, but it's well worth putting two hooks down because very often you can get two fish at once. So here we go again. We're loaded up. We're locked and loaded. We've got another fish on here, pumping it up. You can use fixed balls for whiting. Look, they're not a huge fish. Um, I would suggest a four pound whiting is an absolute monster. So you can catch them on fixed ball or spinning reels, or you can use your regular multiplying reels. You do not need a special type of reel. And again, look at this. This one is a whiting, it's not a pouting. It's again, it's taken the bottom hook, indicating that the flowing trace is indeed working and is flowing. It's going down tide. Um, so you can bounce between those two methods depending what you want to use and what the state of the tide is. There's the Paternoster rig, small hooks on there. Just make sure you try and pop that hook back over. These I've had fish on and it's absolutely got chewed and mauled and bashed around. And they've pulled and tugged at the bait and pulled it, and popped it down the bend of the hook. So this time I'm putting it over the eye hook as I showed you. That helps hold it up and there it's nice and flat it's a long straight line and it won't spin or tangle in the tide when it's like that don't waste your time putting down big gobs of, of bait that is just hanging in the bend of the hook it's, it's just you know it's going to spin in the tide you'll probably get a tangle and the same principle here with the pattern oster i let it go down i'm stopping it with my thumb on the left of the reel spool there slowing it every now and then just so i don't on any time, so as soon as it hits the bottom, I'm touch ledging over my fingers, and this particular reel has some braid on it, so I'm definitely, definitely gonna feel the bites tugging away.
So, there we go. There's the whiting. I've been catching loads of smaller ones. This one has actually been banged on the head and I'm going to clean this one. With whiting, they're like pouting as well. You want to get the guts out fairly quickly, even on a cold day. Take a sharp knife, just split either side of the vent like that, and you'll find you can get the guts out. Now, whiting don't really have big guts at all. They don't have a lot of sort of guts in their stomach cavity. It's quite small. But to stop the fish going off and to preserve it, you can take the gills off, you can cut the head off, but if you just pull the guts out like this and just nip them off, I suppose you could use them as well if you wanted. I have heard of people using the guts here. I've actually used crab that I found inside uh, whiting and, and, and other species. Uh, ling as well, I can remember doing that. And the crab that was inside, I actually put on the hook and still caught fish. So wash it all out the insides in the fresh seawater. Do not do it back in the harbour because there could well be fuel in the harbour or marina and you don't want that to taint the flesh. When you've got it all cleaned, Put it in the box with the other ones. When you get what you want to take home, four, five or six, then that's enough for you. Here's another bite. This one is on a whole whiting with a bigger hook. I'm not exactly sure if the fish is there. You can see me pulling and there goes mad speed winding. And here goes the rod, hooped over. Well, now, there is a species off the south coast of England, and indeed around the world, that will eat whiting. What is this one going to be? It's got this rod, which is quite stiff, bent over, giving me a good scrap, it's peeling some line off. OMG, what is this? This is most definitely not a whiting. I thought I picked up my other line there, as you can see on the right. I'm not sure if that was a second fish biting away, but what I'm going to do is get these two cleared. I'm fishing on my own, so it's pretty difficult fishing. That's where I've got the head cam. I've gone round that line and being a greedy fisherman, I haven't wound that one in. I've left it down in case there's a second fish there. I'm very, very keen to see what this fish is. It's not a small fish, definitely not a small fish. It's coming up big, it's coming up heavy. It's telling me it's got head shakes, it's telegraphing its way up that braid line into the rod top, down through the blank, through the reel, into my hands, and thereby into my brain. It's telling me it could well be a cod. Here we go, a few more pumps. Go, come on, you can do it, man. You can do it. You're fishing on your own. It's a good job you've got that head cam because nobody would ever believe you're catching. And there it is, a bit of colour in the water. Oh my God, what am I going to do? A net, a net, quick. It's a cod. Luckily, I fumble around and I find a release gaff that I use for shark fishing. It takes me one millisecond to decide to, oops, miss it. Second time, not miss it. Oh, just washing the fish off, guys. Boy, was I pleased. I had no, well I got my net, I couldn't untangle, it was all tangled up. I just managed to grab a little short hand gap I used to keep when I used to bring sharks aboard for tagging, especially with broad. All it is, is just an old 7699 Mustad seed in, it was about 14 you know, for marlin, a piece of 600 pound wire, and a piece of like, flying, a rope for, make a, make a mini flying gaff. Was I grab, I just grab it and stuck the fish. I mean what a good job, I think I put down just two baits while I was whiting fishing. And look at this lump, guys. Oh, what? Spout. I guess it goes about 14 pounds. Mind you, the last ones I said 14 were 15 or 16. I'm calling this one 14 pounds. Beautiful cod. Going to be a bonus to those whiting. I mean, just no, don't, never neglect just putting one big bait down and sort of forgetting it. That bait has been down there hours. And along came this guy, right over slack water. That is bizarre but gratefully accepted. What a beauty. Oh, well there we go guys. Some really good whiting. I've had a load of whiting today. And as for that bonus cod, my God, it was horrible this morning. Wind against tide, ebbing tide, which goes to the west, quite a biggish tide, and the wind coming in the opposite direction. I think it was about northwesterly they gave. Horrible, cold, mucky. Not much being caught from what I heard on the radio, but I've, I've had a good time with these. Lovely big white in there. I put loads back, I had loads. I'm going to take these back to the Conker kitchen, show you how I'm going to cook them. The sunset is going down. I'm on my own, so I need to get back. I'm going to get, well, it'll be dark by the time I run up the, uh, the creeks anyway, so I'm going to try and pull the anchor, get the lines in. I've had a great day catching white in to eat. And I'll tell you what, I still can't get over that cod. Let's get the engine started.
Well, I was certainly pleased to catch all those whiting, put a load back, and what a bonus that cob was. So there you've got a variety of rigs, and don't forget guys, this pattern oster rig especially in deep water reefs in foreign countries works really, really well. Groupers, snappers, anything like that, you've still got the bonus of, of fishing a different variety of depths. You can fish a hook six feet off the bottom if you want. So, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget to watch Mike's Totally Awesome Outdoors Show. Go mad at the moment. There's the odd fish cookery on there as well. I think we got about half a dozen fish cookery ones. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It's a little bell thingy in the corner. I don't know, I don't do all this computer stuff. Mike does that for me. All I do is go fishing and pass you guys on tips. Have a good one. Get out there and try and catch some fish on these two rigs.